Who was it? Who was it that thought of rockets? I'm <laughs> telling you, I've been thinking of I've been thinking of how to pronounce this name all day. I sat through my three hour lecture today <laughs> practicing this name. <laughs> Tsiolkovsky. Right. It's tough because it's spelled it's, it's because this right here in Russian switch is like is like a CH sound. I looked that up. <laughs> Research. Um so how did we get rockets? He suggested in 1903, hey, you know what would be awesome? Rockets. <laughs> uh, that's a paraphrase. <laughs> we probably shouldn't have put the quotation marks around that. But you see, if this was a real project, I'd have to produce my source on that. But this isn't a, a real project. It's a very casual environment. So he said rockets would be awesome, but he didn't call them rockets. Rockets came uh, in the 20s when they actually started building, rock well, building rockets. Um, he called it chemical propulsion uh, into, into cosmic space, I believe. Um, and, th you know, that scored a whole bunch of Russian scientists, he was Russian, by the way, Russian scientists who started thinking about rockets, and a lot of scientists in Europe started thinking about rockets a lot. And Americans kind of thought about rockets. But after World War II, um, everyone thought space would be a really cool place to go, um, to place all their new weapons and toys. Um, so the United States was sort of falling behind the Soviets in, uh, in rocket, uh, rocketry, like science. Like they didn't have enough people behind the science of rocketry, and the Soviets had a whole slew of people behind them. Um, so they put into place Operation Paperclip, which was uh, the United States' plan to take 104 Russian, or sorry, Russian Nazi uh, rocket scientists who had been developing like B-1 and B-2 rockets and B-3 rockets for the uh, Nazis during World War II, and they took them out of their bakery jobs and all the things they tried to do after you know Nazi Germany collapsed and people didn't need rockets anymore. And they said, hey, listen, this will be the don't ask, don't tell policy, but for Nazism and not for the other thing, <laughs> of the 1940s. We'll take you to America and you can work for us, and we won't tell everyone that you guys were Nazis and we won't shoot you for it. They said, cool. Um, so they started building rockets for the United States, which is where you get Von Braun's uh, Saturn V, ICBMs, uh, medium range ballistic missiles, whatever that would be. Um, which sort of started off, this is the starting position for the space race between the Soviet Union and America. Uh, they had to break Newton's gravitational uh, for or force that was sort of holding them to the Earth, and they needed to get into space. And bam, they win. You know, they are the they are the technological peak of uh, the world at the time. And so they were on their marks. They were set. And the Soviet Union won. Would you have this little? There we go. <laughs> Uh, on April 12, 1961, I should probably turn that off. People are going to come in this room and think I'm giving a very disturbing presentation. <laughs> the Soviet Union. Uh, Yuri Gagarin is launched into space on this contraption right here. Uh, he's crammed in at the top somewhere. I'm not exactly sure where, but that would be, that'd be a scary ride. <laughs> Actually, apparently, the Americans picked up the signal from his transmissions that said, when he got into space, he said, I see no God up here which I thought was pretty cool. Um, the, Soviets, the Soviet pilot returns to Earth as a hero to all of humanity, begrudgingly to the Americans. They sort of warmed up to him after that whole Cold War thing disintegrated. They probably hated him a lot when he came down. Um, this was the Vostok 3K rocket, which was not as cool as the Saturn V. Um, that's, that's the rocket that won the space race. Um. The surface of the Earth is the shore of the cosmic ocean. Recently we've waded a little way up, and the water seems inviting. So that was sort of the first step into space. Um, I took a gigantic chunk out of the middle, as I said. But that was sort of, uh, that was the story of how we got from here to here. Not the moon yet, but <laughs> that was soon enough. Uh, that was my presentation on the first steps into space. Probably could have been a little longer. I could probably gone into a lot more detail, but I didn't want to bog you guys down. So, I'll be That's hilarious, dude. <laughs> <laughs>
I like how you got the Carl Sagan cut. Do you have a question? Oh, yes, Tom? So who would you say is the most inspirational person that you researched? The most inspirational person that I researched? Um, I'm going to take Newton out of that because actually all the like huge physicists um, had something like weird about them, like personally. Um, Newton was kind of off his rocker, he studied a lot of alchemy and things that weren't true, but no one really talks about that. Einstein married his cousin, um, so that, that rules him out. I'd say the most inspirational person, um, Von Braun was a Nazi, <laughs> so I can't say that. I'd almost say Yuri Gagarin for having having the cojones to, to get into the top of that rocket and, and ride into space, you know, first. I would I probably would well I'd see how he did first. Yeah? Uh Henry Cavendish's torsion balance didn't work like that. Alright, cool. <laughs> Could you more yell at me? And <laughs> well, I didn't want to be like, oh, he put him on a glass thread, and then the glass thread comes down to a crossbar, which has two equally massed lead balls that are, that are equidistant, and then you put two other lead balls adjacent to that, so that you can measure the displacement knowing the torsional strength of the, is that what it takes? Yeah. But that's, <laughs> that's, how, that's, that's how what I, that's why I wanted it to sound like. The torsion strength, where then you know how much force uh, per you know, angle yeah. is, uh, is twisting. So what he did was he took four giant lead balls, put two of them connected to the spring, two of them very close, and then he measured the angle. Okay. Did he actually publish it? Because I wasn't sure about that. That was just what my physics teacher said. I, I, I don't know whether or not he in my it. In my research, I didn't find anything on that. So if, if he did publish it, I'm going to have to go home and have a very serious talk with my grade 12. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they call about him how he lied to me. The Sorry. They call him a man who weighed the earth. Man, wait, so. Well, so if you want to have some serious. <laughs> Cred. That's right. Be like, hey. You retire, you'd be like, hey, I wait here. Do <laughs> <laughs> you think you can make a What kind of money? Alright, is that all the questions for me? Alright. Thank you guys.